The laws are not being applied the same. It's quite clear that some businesses can easily escape the regulations. More often than not, those businesses appear to be foreign owned. I'm the Unspecialist. Let's talk about how some businesses seem to have free reign to ignore all laws and regulations related to building in Guyana. After spending all this time in the studio, I decided to hit the streets and I took a trip to Diamond to see what some of the people in my comments were really talking about. Now, there's so much I could talk about in this video, but I want to focus on building codes and why I think that was the most alarming thing I noticed while in that community. First and foremost, on that Great Diamond front road, which is just about a three kilometer stretch of road, I noticed 11 Chinese supermarkets and two hardware stores. That translates to a Chinese supermarket or hardware on almost every block. The only blocks that didn't have one were the ones that already had a local grocery or variety store, which predated the arrival of those foreign businesses or a homeowner that simply decided not to rent or let their building be used for a supermarket. We could get into zoning laws, but let's come back to that in a later video. There's something else that really stood out to me, and it's something that all of these supermarkets, hardware stores, all these Chinese businesses had in common. And for me, what really stood out was the lack of fences. Not in the sense that you might think, because clearly all those buildings have fences. This is because for many of them, they built out to the fence, extended the business all the way out, sometimes even beyond the fence, and used that fence as an outer wall. Let's play a game called Find the Fences. Here we are on the East Bank main road and Thousand Home Shopping quite clearly built out to that fence. The awning makes it clear that it's an extension and the door is where that fence should be. So clearly that's now the outer wall. If you look in the back, there's the main structure. So it's quite obvious that they built out several feet to make this happen. If you head into Eccles, you'll see the same thing at almost all the supermarkets there. Here's an example. This supermarket, it looks like they may have raised the fence and they obviously extended out to it, increasing the space inside. But again, that fence is an outer wall. Another supermarket in Eccles, same thing. And frankly, you can take a drive around almost any community and just take a look at how these supermarkets are built, how the extensions are made to the property. And you can see that there's clearly something wrong here. Here you have that extension being made to the building and there's no gutter in, just a roof that's already extended out beyond where that outer fence should be. Here we have some gutters, but once again, the fence is the outer wall. Same thing here and here and here, and you can just keep going. These are just a few examples of many, and it doesn't really matter. Supermarket or hardware, the methods are the same. Not only is this illegal, but it is also very dangerous. With a little research, you'll find out that since 2021, Chinese supermarkets and stores have been involved in several of the largest multi-building fires across Guyana. Let's look at a few notable examples over the past few years. Here's an article from 2022 about when the famous China Star supermarket in Lethem Region 9 burned down. If you look a bit further in the article, some interesting details will reveal themselves. The article said that one of the issues that will soon be addressed is the certification of buildings in the commercial area of Letem to ensure that they're in keeping with the building codes. Since the design of the China Star supermarket, as well as the materials used in its construction, hampered firefighters from gaining access to the building. Back in 2023, there was a notable fire at Peroni Landing, destroying a Chinese supermarket and affecting some other buildings in the area. Very early in the article, you'll see that the Ministry of Home Affairs in a statement said that the fire reportedly started in a generator room adjacent to the Chinese supermarket and subsequently spread to nearby structures, affecting seven buildings. We can bring things forward to 2024 and see that much hasn't changed because in Linden, a Chinese restaurant was gutted by fire. Another story in 2024 shows that fire destroyed a Chinese supermarket at Golden Grove. One of the most notable features of that supermarket is that they built right out to the fence and the fence was their outer wall. A more recent story from June 2024 
said that a Chinese supermarket at Barnwell East Bank Yesukubo has been destroyed in a fire that resulted after a gas cylinder reportedly exploded. A Starbrook News article which went into a bit more detail about the incident at Barnwell East Bank Yesukubo said that Vikram Ramai, who resides in Tusha Newhausen Scheme, told Starbrook News that at the time when I constructed the building, it cost $30 million. He disclosed that when he went to insure the building, both of the insurance companies that he visited refused to give him insurance since he was renting to Chinese. After reading this, don't you wonder why the insurance companies were unwilling to give insurance to someone renting to Chinese? Could it be something to do with these very improper building practices, which are clearly a factor in all of these cases of fire that I mentioned. To make things fit in this video, I focused on 2021 and forward. However, this trend can be traced even further back. Some viewers may remember when two Chinese nationals unfortunately died in a huge Vredenhoop file. At the center of that case was the Chinese supermarket, which the Chinese nationals rented, and four other buildings were affected along that stretch of road in the west coast of Demerara. These cases all had one thing in common. The buildings involved broke several of the building regulations, making them high risk and a danger to the buildings nearby. This is particularly dangerous and concerning for commercial zones, which tend to be more densely packed. However, you can also make an argument that it is even worse in residential zones where these businesses should not exist in the first place. The articles detailing these cases are all publicly available. And something else you'll notice is that improper storage of gas cylinders popped up in a few of the cases. This all brings up several questions. Did these places get all the necessary approvals? Are they compliant with the regulations from GEA? Do they have their fire permit? What about things like land use clearance? And of course, the most important question, especially for an area like Great Diamond, where is the NDC in all this? Based on my observation, it appears that the NDC has been very busy oppressing locals trying to make a living for themselves and ignoring all these flagrant violations of local laws and regulations. I spoke to several local establishments in the area, and every last one of them was hounded by the NDC for any extensions or changes that they tried to make to their property. They were all forced to stop work or change their plans. However, when we look back at these Chinese supermarkets and hardware, it's clear that the NDC did nothing or they were simply ignored and the work continued anyway. Whichever one it is, it's fairly obvious from these images what the results were. I'm more inclined to believe that it's likely that the NDC did nothing because as these images show, it's impossible not to see what's going on on that front road. And it's not just on the front road. It's also happening in the scheme itself. And it's not just Diamond. This is happening all over the country. Frankly, I think this entire ordeal exposes the weakness of Guyanese people. Here we have systems failing the people, putting them in danger. And the people are simply sitting down, allowing it to happen, accepting their fate, and even resigned to believe that there's nothing that they can do about this. A neutral onlooker may observe the situation, seeing people being exploited and wonder, where is that sense of solidarity for your fellow Guyanese? Here you have in the community businessmen and women who were trying to grow and doing things the right way up until this situation got out of hand. Now with many of them seeing their livelihoods under threat and at risk of destruction, it seems that they may not be in uproar until after there's already a catastrophe, which brings the discussion back to zoning laws. The blatant disregard for zoning laws proves that this expansion has little to do with providing fair competition and a lot more to do with putting the local businesses out of business. Tune in to the next episode to find out more about this topic. As always, thanks for your support and thanks for watching.